let's turn to space journalists, uh, Leonard uh, David. Leonard, welcome to the program. Um, let's talk about this rendezvous and docking maneuver between Tianzhou 9 and Tiangong Space Station. How delicate, if you will, is this operation? How long does it normally take? And what are the challenges? Well, it's definitely a, a, another step in the uh, Chinese space program. And, and, and uh, in some ways, you want things to be routine, but they're difficult. Space is always difficult. Uh, rendezvous docking is a delicate operation. You have six tons of, uh, uh, more than six tons of uh, hardware going up to the uh, orbital uh, outpost that's there. And uh, I'm sure the crew loves it because, you know, they have fresh uh, things that are brought in, new spacesuits. Um, it, it's an exciting time. Anytime you're in space and you have even a robotic uh, visitor come and deliver all the goods and supplies that you need to, to operate the facility. So it, it's a step in the right direction. It, I, I, in the future, I, one hopes that all this is becoming very routine, but they're always fraught with uh, problems and uh, clearly uh, China has made another step in the right direction. Yeah, and it sounds like there weren't a whole lot of problems uh, with the docking at all. It seemed to have gone flawlessly. How long uh, does it normally take, Leonard? A few hours? Well, yeah, I think uh, China has a very interesting uh, capability of rapid uh, rendezvous and docking. Sometimes these vehicles take uh, uh, numbers of days to get, to get there. And that speaks to something that I think we should not forget that at some point uh, in our future, we're going to have astronauts in trouble, a space station breakdown, and you do want rapid uh, rendezvous and docking to uh, institute a space rescue. Um, and I think that's another area that uh, both China and, uh, and the Soviet Russia and the uh, United States should probably start thinking about is space rescue. Uh, you, you really want to make this operational and routine and safe for all the people that, that do uh, go into space. Yeah, I mean, you bring up a good point. How do uh, Taikonauts safely and efficiently transfer cargo between the spacecraft and the station in microgravity? Well, they, they uh, from the previous uh, dockings uh, uh, take a lot of time to bring in that cargo and, uh, and put it within the facility. And uh, uh, the International Space Station, the, the NASA uh, program, uh, has the same kind of capability. But you, it has to be orderly. And you don't want to be running around in there trying to figure out what cargo you really got and where does it go. So it takes a lot of pre-planning plotting out and that and Leonard is, is it normally one crew member who does it or do they all do it together I, I think uh, I've seen at least on the International Space Station multiple crews take their turns of bringing this stuff uh, uh, all the packages in and placing them in I'm not sure about the uh, China's uh, uh, advent there but uh, from what I remember I think it is a pretty dedicated crew member that uh, brings in and makes sure everybody knows where all the pieces went. And talk about some of these experiments you're going to be conducting. What are you going to be watching for? You know, what I'm watching for is the dynamics of humans in space. I mean, uh, China's doing some very fascinating experiments with psychology, uh, workload. How much workload does a, a taikonaut go through? Um, the use of the facility in space is really important because each of these facilities that we have in orbit now uh, enable us to think about the future because you can do experiments and China, one of the things that I love, they brought up some space simulated lunar bricks and uh, I believe put them on the outside of the uh, space station and that, that connotes the future to me. 
these these facilities are orbiting labs and they're test bedding all kinds of new ideas and that just makes the uh, future look more secure to me all right leonard david thank you very much